the NCAA National Player of the Year Awards. The end of the season awards given to what is believed to be the best player in all of college basketball. These awards are given to all-time great college players who have had many great moments in the college ranks and some even bringing it to the NBA ranks for their professional careers. Names like Oscar Robertson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Walton, Larry Bird, and many, many others. But this year, most of the awards have already been given out. By this time, this video has been made and the winner of five out of the six awards has been given to the dominant Oscar Oscar uh wait a second Oscar Shibwe Shibwe Oscar Shibwe Shibwe Oscar Shibwe I'm a I'm a pray to God this is Shibwe I want you to know that I have never been the best at pronouncing names like that. So yes, anyways, Oscar, last name I cannot pronounce for the life of me, at this point won the Associated Press College Player of the Year Award, the Oscar Robertson Trophy, the NABC Player of the Year, Sporting News Men's College Player of the Year, and the Naismith College Player of the Year. So it looks like he's going to completely sweep the award selection with only one more waiting to be released. But in celebration of Oscar's amazing season, he was second place in double doubles this season and put up an amazing stat line of 17 points and 15 rebounds a game we will be discussing today on the alvini linguini channel i talk about all things interesting basketball with your boy alvini linguini what happened to the last 10 national player of the year winners this list will be filled with college legends in their own right and even some nba legends all that and more in this video and make sure because i always have to say this now i'll be talking about the person that won the most of the majority of the awards year by year because i know there'll be that one person who will say something if I didn't mention that said person that happened to win a few of the awards themselves. Anyways, before I get started, you already know what I have to do. The like goal of this video is usual 1,000 likes to help support the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram to get channel news and updates. And follow me on my Twitch, Fully Constrained. With all that out of the way, you already know who it is. What? He incurred an injury dealing with weights in the weight room, so he stitched up in the left hand doing all this. For the 2011 Majority Award winner of the NCAA National Player of the Year Awards, we have Anthony Davis who won every major award outside of the National Association of Basketball Coaches Player of the Year, which was awarded to Draymond Green. Now, it is a very rare occurrence that a player like Adu, who was a freshman at the time, could win a majority of the National Player of the Year Awards, but he joins a very short list of people to do that. But before coming to Kentucky, he was ranked the number one recruit of the class of 2011 over many top guys like... Oh man, uh, Austin Rivers, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and Bradley Beal. Yeah, I can imagine how he dominated this class. Anyways, with his performances at Prospective Charter School in Chicago, Illinois, where he averaged 32 points, 22 rebounds, and 7 blocks a game in his senior year, he was thought to be able to bring this dominance to the college ranks to Kentucky, the freshman powerhouse in one of the few Blue Blood schools. But surprisingly, according to online sources, he was only recruited by Syracuse, Ohio State, and Kentucky. But on his team, he was a very clear leader of this freshman class when he joined with Michael Kidd Gilchrist, the third ranked player of the 2011 class, Marquise Teague, the sixth ranked player of 2011, and Kyle Witcher, I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, the 20th ranked player of the 2011 class. That season where he won the Naismith Player of the Year Award, the AP Player of the Year Award, the John Wooden Player of the Year Award, and the Oscar Robertson Player of the Year Award, alongside with the Sporting News Player of the Year Award, he put up numbers of 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 4.7 blocks a game. You heard me right, 4.7 blocks a game. In that season, he had eight games with seven or more blocks in that season. In that year also, he put up 186 total blocks, which led the NCAA, and he had 46 more blocks than the second place leader. The two-way impact he showed alongside the defensive records he gained showed exactly why he won most of the awards. Alongside that, he went to the national tournament where Kentucky had the number one seed in the South with a 38-2 record, and they even won the whole thing while being the tournament's most outstanding player. Also, if you'd like to know more information about his time in the tournament, check out my video where I talked about what happened to the last 10 most outstanding players of that tournament. But anyways, he came in as a freshman, almost sweeps the major awards, win the national tournament, and then wins MVP 
of that tournament. If that doesn't sound like a perfect collegiate career, I do not know how it can possibly be better. But after that perfect season, he went to the 2012 NBA draft where he was unanimously thought as the number one overall pick of the draft where he went to the team he would stay with for the first seven seasons of his career, the New Orleans Pelicans. But again, we all know how AD's career turns out. He goes to the Pelicans to give them seven seasons of his best play, only getting two playoff appearances, gets deservedly pissed because he played in a small market and couldn't get much better, becomes one of the many superstars to play with the Lakers, then gets his first NBA championship of his career, despite how many people, you know, think about his time in LA. But despite public opinion, we must all remember Anthony Davis's dominance on all levels basketball, whether it be high school, college, or even the NBA. For the 2012 majority winner of the NCAA National Player of the Year awards, we have Trey Burke of the Michigan Wolverines. This year, he won almost every single major award outside of the Sporting News Men's College Basketball Player of the Year award, which was given to Victor Oladipo from Indiana. But for Trey Burke before coming to Michigan, he was the 93rd best recruit in the United States and a four-star recruit while being regarded as the 17th best point guard in the nation behind guys like Austin Rivers, Marquise Teague, and Quinn Cook. He had many major offers from Butler, Cincinnati, Iowa, and Nebraska, but he went to debatedly the best school out of all of them, Michigan. At Michigan, he was a two-year player and even came in immediately as a starter. In his freshman season, he put up numbers of 14 points and 4.8 assists a game, which led the team. That year for his team, they finished 13th in the final AP pool and was the fourth seed in their region for the tournament. However, they lost to Ohio in the second round. But to improve his drag stop even further, he went another year to get another chance at the national tournament, which again showed huge results. In his sophomore year, Trey improved in almost every statistic category his points went up to 18 per game and his assists went up to six per game while also taking more shots and being more efficient while doing it for that reason he took over college basketball with his scoring prowess getting 15 or more games with 20 points or more he won five out of the six major national player of the year awards and again with only victor oladipo spoiling the sweep the major story for trey burke and the wolverines though was his ascension in the national tournament where they were only one game away from winning the whole entire thing his journey there included a game tying shot against kansas that many people know him for, which they won by two points. That goes too strong. Three point game. Four throws it down. Five seconds. Fires for three. The game is tied. He's tied up. And his 24 point performance against the Louisville Cardinals that came to a loss. But that amazing season and run to the championship game ended up being all he needed to get drafted at the ninth spot by the Timberwolves in the 2013 NBA draft before being traded to the Utah Jazz. Now, unfortunately, this is where his story takes a turn for the worse, as his NBA career was mainly highlighted by how many different teams he's been on. One major trend about small guards in the NBA is how hard it is to stay in the league. And with Trey Burke's numbers with the Jazz on his rookie deal, it really makes sense. After averaging 12 points a game, but only on 38% from the field, showing his flaw as a scorer in the NBA level. Due to that, he's been an NBA journeyman, playing on five different teams while currently playing on the Dallas Mavericks, where he may have found some sort of a home as he signed a multi-year deal and even played 39 games for them off a bench as a scorer. His NBA career has been filled with a lot of moving around, but we all can't forget what he did at the college level that will have him immortalized forever. For the 2013 Majority Award winner of the NCAA National Player of the Year Awards, we have Doug McDermott, aka Dougie McBuckets of the Creighton Blue Jays. Now before Doug came to Creighton, he was a three-star recruit and was regarded as the 155th best player of the 2010 high school class. Despite that though, he still had a few mid-major offers from Drake, Indiana State, San Diego, UCF, and Wisconsin of Milwaukee. At first, he was confirmed to go to Northern Iowa, but when his dad, Greg McDermott got the Creighton job. He moved from there and released his commitment to play at that college to go to his dad's college, which is interesting because that means he was a coach's kid. A coach's kid in college, I wonder how his teammates felt about that. And as a Clippers fan who had to deal with Austin Rivers being with Doc Rivers, Again, I can only imagine. Anyways, with him being at Creighton, Doug in three years broke the school's record for points and even defensive rebounds. But Doug McDermott was known as a superstar in the college levels, and it was mainly 
due to his scoring. From his sophomore year to his senior year, he averaged over 20 points per game and shot over 50% from the field. In the year he swept most of the major player of the year awards, he averaged 26 points and 7 rebounds a game while shooting 52% from the field and 45% from 3 on 6 threes a game. It is safe to say absolutely nobody can stop him, but when you play in the Mountain View Conference for 3 years and then move up to the Big East for his senior year, it shows why he was able to dominate mainly, which was one of his main criticisms. I don't choose to really believe that though. Unfortunately though, in his 3 attempts in the tournament, he was never able to pass the second round, but in his best games, he scored 47 points against Providence in his senior year on 60% shooting, 41 against Wichita State on 83% shooting in his junior year, and even a 44 point career high in his sophomore year against Bradley. Again, it is safe to say why everybody knew him as a NCAA superstar. He is even 6 all time in NCAA Division 1 all time scoring leaders for a career. With all of that alongside of his major player of the year awards in his senior year, he was regarded as one of the most interesting prospects coming into the 2014 draft because everyone wanted to see how he translate into the league. Well, the Denver Nuggets drafted him at 11 in that draft and he was traded to the Chicago Bulls where he started his NBA journey. But it was safe to say he never became that top tier scorer he was in college, but he was surely a respectable role player in the league. He even had some 30 point games in the NBA itself. In his best season with the Indiana Pacers last season, averaging 13 points a game, while still staying efficient as always, and could have even had a 50-40-90 season. Small things like that shows that he is definitely NBA material, despite him not being the same as he was in college. But his college legacy will forever be remembered, as it is very rare anyone could put up those type of numbers that he did in the college ranks. For the 2014 Majority Award winner of the NCAA National Player of the Year Awards, we have Frank Kaminsky from Wisconsin. Now for Frank, he was certainly not someone you'd expect to be on top of the college ranks as a player. In high school, he was regarded as the 242nd best player in the United States and the 26th best center. But while at Benet Academy in Illinois, he put up numbers of 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 4.2 blocks a game as a senior while receiving some offers from North Western, Bradley, DePaul, and Northern Illinois. But when you get an offer from a big school like Wisconsin, you take it, and that's exactly what Frank did. His progression was rather normal there, as everybody else's would be. He started off the bench as a freshman and a sophomore, but after that is when he became a vital member of that team. In his junior year, he started every game and became the leading scorer, averaging 13 points a game and even leading them to the Final Four, where they lost to Kentucky. But in his senior year, he made another jump. That year, he averaged 18.8 eight points, eight rebounds, and a block game on great efficiency from the field and from three. As a three-way scorer, he took over the NCAA having 17 games with 20 more points or more and a 31-point performance against Michigan State going 11 of 17 from the field and 3 of 4 from 3. With the many performances he gave his team in that season and his luring game of being a center who could put the ball on the floor and make plays, he took all six of the major player of the year awards and to put the cherry on top of that amazing season, he led his team to the national championship against the Duke Blue Devils who was led by Jaleel Okafor and everybody was waiting to see how the battle of two of the best centers in college basketball would turn out. And once again, Frank impressed with a 21 point and 12 rebound performance, but it led to a five point loss. So it ended his great season all around. With the hype created from this mobile seven footer, he went into the draft as an interesting prospect and the Charlotte Hornets took a chance with him with said interesting prospect at the ninth pick of the draft. But this will be the end of his amazing come up story because with the Hornets, he wasn't able to keep leveling up like he did in NCAA. He has some pretty decent years in the league, but nothing to write home about and not much development overall. But as of right now, he's on the Phoenix Suns where he was actually a part of the team that went to the finals and even played some key backup minutes there. But for now, he is however injured at the moment and is recovering from a knee injury. For the 2015 Majority Award winner of the NCAA National Player of the Year Awards, we have Buddy Heald from Oklahoma who won four out of the six major awards while only losing two of them to Denzel Washington. You know, the same guy who was being clowned by other NBA players because he was destroyed by a Verizon wireless manager.
Anyways, getting away from that, before going to Indiana, Buddy Hield was regarded as the 156th best player in the class of 2012 and had offers to Boston College, Memphis, Miami, and Texas A&M, and even Kansas, a blue blood school. But he went with Oklahoma, and it makes sense because he was able to play immediately and make an impact immediately. For his freshman year, he was mainly just a shooter off the bench, but from his sophomore year and beyond, he was the leading scorer and a true force for the team, where in his best year as a senior, he averaged 25 points a game, which was only second place to the first person when it came to scoring averages in the NCAA. However, he led the NCAA in total makes from three while shooting nine threes a game at a 45% clip. He was an absolute unstoppable force from three, and he even led his team to the number one spot in the AV poll for three weeks in a row and even played all the way to the final four in the national tournament. For the numbers he was able to put up in a dominance from three, he ended up winning four out of the six major awards, but again, the other two were given to Denzel Valentine, who had an all-around great season himself. But let it be known, Buddy had 12 games with over 30 points or more, and even had a 46-point explosion against Kansas, the same school that wanted him years ago, and even multiple 30-point performances in the national tournament. From there, he was known as being one of the best three-point shooters in the NCAA. He took his talents to the NBA, but a lot of people were skeptical about him as he was coming in as a 22-year-old prospect, and as we know, the older you are coming in, the less room for error is allowed since your prime only lasts for so long as a 22 year old. The scouts are obviously wanting an 18 or 19 year old over an already seasoned player like Buddy because more potential means better player. But in the 2016 draft, New Orleans Pelicans didn't seem to care as they took him with the sixth pick to help out immediately as the Pelicans made the playoffs only two years ago. Unfortunately, the Pelicans didn't seem to be too impressed with him and traded him that same season for DeMarcus Cousins to help speed up the process of them making the playoffs and for Buddy to develop elsewhere and we all know how the story ends buddy became one of the premier three-point shooters in today's game but for the last four and a half seasons his skills has been wasted on a stagnant kings team but we may see a new future for him ahead of him as he was traded to the pacers in the recent trade deadline and could potentially be traded to another situation soon it's safe to say that he brought the same flamethrower of a shot that he had in college and won't be giving up that same confidence anywhere he had in college in the nba for the 2016 winner of all the the major NCAA National Player of the Year awards, we have Frank Mason III from Kansas. Before going to Kansas, Frank Mason was considered the 118th best player in the class of 2018. But even with that, he still got great offers from Alabama, Rutgers, Virginia Tech, and South Carolina. But he was still able to get that blue blood offer from Kansas after his preparatory year. Now, we all know of Kansas as the school that always produces NBA players year after year. In his freshman season, he played alongside Andrew Wiggins, Joel Embiid, Wayne Selden and Tariq Black. So as you can imagine, playing time came kind of scarce, only getting 16 minutes a game in his freshman season. But once all of them left for the draft the following year, he became one of the leaders of his team from his sophomore year and beyond. But when players like Wayne Selden and Perry Ellis end up graduating, going to the NBA, his senior year became the year he took over the NCAA. Now it's very rare you see a blue blood school have someone scoring over 20 points a game as they are usually stacked with talent all around. But in the 2016 season, it's where that mold was broken. In his senior year, Frank Mason averaged 20 points a game on 49% shooting from the field and 47% from three on four threes a game. He was basically unstoppable on the game-to-game -game basis and led the Jayhawks to the top team in the NCAA by the end of the season with a 33-5 and record. And he even led his team to the Elite Eight before losing to Oregon. But with his dynamic performances as a 5'11 guard, he won all the major NCAA Player of the Year awards in a unanimous sweep. And with that, with his senior season done with, he decided to try his hands at the NBA with all of his accolades and take things to the next level. But as I always say in these videos, being an undersized guard coming into the NBA will hurt your stock, and with him also being 23 as soon as he would play his first NBA game, that would also drop his draft stock. But even with those double negatives going into the draft, he was still drafted at the 34th spot by the Sacramento Kings, the owners of the longest playoff streak in the NBA, by the way, to play backup to the person drafted before him, De'Aaron Fox, who he also also played last season in the NCAA, but unfortunately, his story from that point doesn't really progress much further. Since being drafted there, he was regulated to a bench role in his rookie season, playing 18 minutes off the bench in 52 games. Since then, he has been on two different teams and is currently residing in the G League. For the 2017 winner of all the major NCAA Player of the Year awards, we have Jalen Brunson from Villanova. Before becoming the 
two-time NCAA champion and sweeping the major player of the year honors in 2017. He was regarded as the 22nd best player in the class of 2015 and the fourth best point guard in the nation. Due to his five-star status, he got offers from Purdue, Kansas, Michigan State, and regular Michigan, Ohio State, and Illinois. But he went to Villanova and became the day one starter to win a national championship in his freshman year. But if he was going to go to the NBA, he would have to improve his craft. And over the next two years, that's exactly what he do. In his sophomore year, he averaged 14 points per game. And then in his senior year, he averaged a team best 18 points a game with four assists to lead his team to a near NCAA best 36 and four record and helping his team score the most points in the NCAA per game at 86 points a game. With him being the best player on the best team, he was able to receive every major player of the year award, but this isn't even the end as he would then go to the tournament and win the national championship again. As you can imagine with the accolades he was able to round up alongside his national player of the year honors, going to the league as a 20 year old six foot one guard would come with very little issue and that came to be true as he was drafted by the Dallas Mavericks alongside Luka Doncic in 2018 and has been improving his craft once again ever since. If there's one thing I applaud Villanova players for is their ability to be on any team and being able to make an impact. Players like Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, Ryan Archidiakono, and Mikhail Bridges have already shown that to be true and in Jalen's fourth season in the league where he is already becoming a very vital part of that team average 16 points per game on amazing efficiency it is safe to say that he's going to get an amazing payday after he is done with his rookie contract for the 2018 winner of all the major ncaa national player of the year awards we have zion williamson from duke now even though it goes without saying zion williamson before coming to duke was regarded as the number five recruit of the class of 2018 while only being under bowl bowl the zero little and future teammates in rj barrett and cam reddish due to all of the hype surrounding him and the highlights he create on a game-to-game -game basis. He got scholarships from all the Blue Blood schools in Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Duke, the school he went to, but he, Cam Reddish, and RJ Barrett created the super team at Duke that had one really amazing season together. And to say that the season was only amazing just for Zion in particular is an understatement because he, at his one season at Duke, created highlight after highlight after highlight while putting up 22 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and a block per game. As you can imagine, with the hype he brought in from high school and now he was doing it on the college level, the hype stayed strong. He made an impact on both sides of the court with style. He even did so much that he blew out a shoe and his knee went out at the same time during the game. With Barack Obama watching him at the same time, had to be awkward. His one year was everything that people wanted it to be. Due to that, he won every single major player of the year award in the NCAA, ACC All-Defensive Team, and even the Carl Malone Award. I don't think anyone wants to win an award with that name, not going to lie. But with the season over and done with, Zion was undisputably going to be the number one overall pick, and that's exactly what he was. But unfortunately, it was to the New Orleans Pelicans to replace AD, their last number one overall pick in 2012. Now, we all know of his current situation. Injuries have crippled his first few seasons, but when he was finally able to go out there and play the last season, he went and averaged 27 points a game while also being an all-star. But weight problems and other injuries have not allowed him to play this season but like i said on twitter follow me by the way he has a very similar start to someone like a joel Embiid. so honestly just give him time we saw what happened when joel Embiid got time he has shown out on all major levels and even when he had the opportunity last year to play in the nba he has became one of the most efficient scorers in the paint as a score but no one will ever forget all the stuff he did at the college level or even the high school level and now we are all waiting to see what he will do on the nba level for the 2019 winner of most of the major ncaa national player of the year awards we have obi Toppin from Dayton. Now I'm sure y'all know of his story being an absolute standout of college basketball only two years ago. But for those who don't know, he had a Dennis Rodman transformation. In high school, he had zero college offers from any D1 school and went from being a 6'2 junior to a 6'5 senior, averaging 20 points, eight rebounds, three assists, and three steals. But with no D1 offers, he went to Mount Zion Prep where he grew to be 6'8. From there, he became a highly sought after recruit getting offers from Georgetown, Texas 
Texas Tech, Illinois, Texas A&M, and many more. But he went to Dayton to be able to become the top player immediately, and as we can see, that became the perfect decision for his career. He spent his first year redshirting due to the academic ineligibility, but in his redshirt freshman season, he went to become the leading scorer averaging 14 points per game. But in his redshirt sophomore year is when people would truly know the name of Obadiah Richard Toppin Jr. As he rose his averages to 20 points per game with highlight dunks in every game and was even showing that he could potentially play at the next level with a three-point shot where he would shoot two a game at a 39% clip. Now for a vocal minority of people, they disapprove of Obi winning many of the Player of the Year awards he won due to him playing at a mid-major college with mid-major competition as his strength of schedule was a 3.69. But when you have such a story like Obi's where everybody can get behind alongside of his highlights and stats, for some, they just let it happen. But even with that, he wasn't able to sweep all of the awards as Luca Garza was able to take the Sporting News Men's College Player of the Year to spoil the sweep. But with that and a loss in NIT tournament in the first round, Obi Toppin stocks was rather interesting, being one of the many athletic power forward prospects that has come through the league in NBA history. And once again, he came into the draft as a 22-year-old, which also adds questions towards his potential. But even with all those question marks, he was still drafted at the A spot by the New York Knicks, despite Julius Randle being one of the best players at the same position. But since then, his career has had a lot of interesting circumstances. First, the fact that Julius Randle turned into the MIP version of himself in his rookie season. Second, the fact that Tom Thibodeau was hired and his antics of never playing rookies and young players unless proven, thus hindering him more. And once again, his age doesn't really help with him as he doesn't have a lot of time to truly develop and it's a rather small window. But as the Knicks fall off from where they were last year and being outside of the play, and it is safe to say that Tom might get fired for someone who is more developmental friendly and Julius could be traded. But even with his first two years in the NBA not coming up to much, we can all be inspired by a story of being someone that was not on anyone's radar to becoming a lottery pick in the NBA. And lastly, for the 2020 winner of all the major NCAA National Player of the Year awards, we have Luca Garza from Iowa. Before going to Iowa, he was regarded as the 118th best player of the class of 2017 and the 10th best center behind guys like Mitchell Robinson, Nick Richards, and Bruno Fernando. And just like those guys, they made immediate impacts on their team. Now, Luca was a four-year starter and is along one of the most dominant big men in the NCAA since his junior year, where he averaged 23 points a game with nine rebounds and almost two blocks a game. Now, what was so great about Luca at the college level was that he was a dominant big man standing at six foot 11 and 265 pounds, being able to post up and overpower people in the paint, while at the same time having a soft touch when it came to jump shots, shooting three threes a game at his senior season at a 44% clip. He was truly one of the ultimate all-around big man in a perfect mold for college, and his numbers and production showed for it. In his senior season, he improved his points per game to 24, which was second in all the NCAA and even led the NCAA in total points. He even topped off his season with a 36-point bomb against the Oregon Ducks in the NCAA tournament, but unfortunately lost. Due to his in-season dominance, he won every major Player of the Year award, and he even won the Sporting News Men's College Basketball Player of the Year award last year, and now he had two of them, which means he joins Oscar Robertson, Bill Bradley, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Bill Walton as the only people to get two of more of that award. After that season, he unfortunately had some troubles when it came to going into the NBA level, and it's because of what I said earlier, his NCAA friendly game, and again, being on the older side of a rookie. But even with all of that, he was still drafted in the second round by the Detroit Pistons, but immediately went to work to make himself more of an NBA player, losing over 20 pounds to make him more mobile. As of now, he's a two-way player for the Pistons where he played 31 games in the NBA and looks to improve more and more to become a better center for the NBA. Seeing him already take steps towards that in his rookie season shows that he can make something of an NBA career if he keeps that going. But for now, he'll be known for his dominance at the NCAA level and be mold that all big men should strive for in college. In the college ranks, everyone's main goal is to become the best player that they can. Either they are the best and are ready to go to the NBA early or develop into the best type of player they can be like we saw some of these people in today's video. It is always interesting to see the 
people who are able to become the best in the NCAA, as we've seen it with people who are number one in high school win it, or to literal unranked people in high school like Obi Toppin. But it shows with the right development program, or again, just being the best right out the gate, that anyone can get that illustrious award to be immortalized in NCAA history. But as always, I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something new, as my vision for this channel is to inform and entertain. Check out my social medias for the Inside Life of Alvini and other channel news. Check out my Twitch where I stream weekly. I have to go through shit like this all the time. Please, please give me something better than this. And lastly, if you want to talk to your boy, there is always my Discord. Links are in the description. But with all that out of the way, this is your boy, Alvini Linguini, saying peace.